Hey, sports card collectors and investors. I hope that everybody had a great weekend. We are back again on Monday. It's been kind of a strange day. It was hot over the last few days, and now the high today is 62 degrees and it's rainy. So it's kind of been a funky weather day. Um, so we're trying to just kind of roll out of bed and, and get something going. So um, today I'm going to be talking about um, kind of a, an anticipated documentary on ESPN and it was Long Gone Summer uh, came out last night and it is the Mark McGuire Sammy Sosa home run race documentary really interesting uh, I'll be honest with you um, you know I didn't get as much kind of a emotion or you know feelings as, as the last dance now granted the last dance was a 10-part series so multiple episodes um, and then I happen to just be more of a basketball fan than a baseball fan. You know, I know for a lot of baseball fans that was a really exciting year, you know, where McGuire and Sosa were, were battling it out and I remember as a kid following it, I mean everybody was following it at the time. So, you know, it, it really was a cool time and it was actually, you know, during a time when baseball was kind of hitting a lull, you know, the early mid 90s, um, you know, and so it was, it definitely gave baseball a boost the excitement around all the you know the home run hitters, um, so you know it was it was cool to um, you know to kind of reminisce. And it was a huge deal that year in sports, and it gave baseball a nice needed boost. So today I'm going to talk about um, how card prices for Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa rookie cards have been affected by the documentary, because you know a lot of people you know, there's been a lot of hype, and so I wanted to follow this, and it's actually kind of a, a cautionary tale. Some of this data you know, as to where, you know, documentaries, while they can, you know, give a boost and there is hype and so forth, it also shows you, you know, price retractions, you know, from these sort of things. So I'll go ahead and, and get right into it. Um, and I'll start with Mark McGuire's rookie cards. Um, the first one that I'm going to cover is the 1987 Donruss rated rookie. Um, and I'm looking at only PSA 10s for all of these cards. So the PSA 10 um, from May 24th to June 9th, it got up as high as $225 to $299 for this card. Uh, whereas, you know, leading up to it, you know, this card, and of course that's a huge bounce. Um, you know, this card was nowhere near that much uh, in the months in the months preceding, you know, the the announcement of the documentary. And I looked, and there's been multiple sales as of yesterday right at that $125 to $150 and 50 cent range is where I saw one as well. So immediately after that documentary aired, it looks to be that, you know, it came, things came back down to earth. And even on the day the documentary aired, um, you know, it looks like pricing retreated some. So, you know, that just kind of shows you, um, you know, we can kind of assess from that, that the, a lot of the, the, the price was, was hype leading up to that documentary, pushing prices up. But in a similar fashion to what happens in the, the comic book investing world, this is a very similar thing that happens. If you have a movie, um, you know, a Marvel movie that's anticipated, well anticipated, the pricing shoots up based on the hype of a first appearance of a character or a villain that's going to be in that movie. And then we've seen in comic book investing when the movie actually comes out, then prices come right back down uh, that the week following typically, you know, after the, the hype kind of recedes and, and everyone sees the movie. Now, if it's a movie where there wasn't a lot of hype built up and it was kind of a surprise hit, then that's where you can get some momentum from a movie release. But in a lot, a lot of times, the price increases and the hysteria is during the hype building part of, of the, it's, it's during the lead up, you know, to the event. But then once the event happens, then a lot of times you do see prices retreat. And we're seeing that here uh, with some of these cards, not all of them, but, but some of them. So the, the next one I'm going to cover uh, from Mark McGuire, 1987 Topps Tiffany rookie card, PSA 10. And this is a really cool looking card. This is one I remember you know, from, from my childhood days. Uh, never did have it, um, but this is a really nice looking card. And in a PSA 10, this card from June 8th to June 11th was selling pretty regularly in the $172 to $201 range. And then on June 14th, we have sales at $325 to $394. So this is one where, you know, as the documentary is hitting, you know, we're seeing a price spike. Now, it'd be interesting to see kind of where, where it looks at the end of this week. You know, is that pricing going to retreat back down to 170 to 
you know, or is this one that did really get a boost and is going to keep on and keep on going up? So, you know, th this kind of shows you how nothing makes sense sometimes in the card world. You're probably thinking I was going to say that every, all the cards, you know, take took a dive as soon as the the documentary aired, and and that's not necessarily the case. Uh, this one in particular has gone up dramatically you know, in the last 24 hours. So I think it'll be really interesting to see if, will it hold up there, you know, or is it going to start coming back down? Next, I've got um, the other kind of, um, you know, the, the Mark McGuire uh, rookie card that's very popular is the 85 Tops, number 401. And this is the one where he's in the USA uniform. And a PSA 10, this is an expensive card. From May 19th up through June 4th, I'm seeing sales all over the place from $2,800 to $3,900 for this card. I believe the PSA pop report is fairly low, about 300 of them, I believe. Um, you know, so for it being, you know, um, you know, one of those 80s cards, there's just not that many in a PSA 10, but that pricing is is up there. Um, I have not seen a recent sale. I was looking at eBay sold listings and I couldn't find one. There might have been one today that I just haven't seen yet. So I'm, I'm going to be curious uh, to see and I'll, I'll more than likely do a follow-up video in the next few weeks uh, to just kind of see what, what pricing has done with these, um, you know, based on the documentary and if, if they, the pricing does retreat. But I haven't seen a sale today yet uh, to see where the, that pricing is. But I'm very curious to see if that you know, the three thousand, four thousand dollar range can hold up for this card. And then now I'm going to move into Sammy Sosa's rookie cards. I just picked a couple of the ones that I saw that that were fairly heavy on transactions. The first one that that I've seen the most is the 1990 Leaf PSA 10 rookie card for Sammy Sosa, and this is one where um, May 20th, um, right in right in that range, leading up to the documentary, we're seeing that sale at 245 to 305 dollars. And then um, as of June 14th, yesterday, they're selling at 187 to 193. And there's multiple sales there. So you've seen a, a pretty big retreat uh, on the pricing for that card. And lastly, I've got Sammy Sosa's 1990 Tops PSA 10. Over the last two weeks, the pricing has been all over the place leading up to the documentary, anywhere from 122 to 353 bucks. I saw a sale for this card. And as of this morning, I saw multiple sales for PSA 10 at $61 to $68. So that's, that's a big ouch uh, for those that, that might have bought this in the 200s to 300s, because um, that really, it, it looks to be that that is a hype-driven price point. Um, now, who knows, maybe those are outlier sales at that 60, 65, $70 range, but um, seems to be more in line with, with where pricing was before the documentary. And, and this is one where I think that I didn't check the pop report, but it is 1990 tops. And so you do have a lot of people that probably have these sitting around or in boxes that if they do send a PSA, um, you know, or how many of them are sitting at PSA right now waiting to come back. So um, you know, that's one where at $350, that's, that's just a heck of a lot of money, um, you know, for this card. Um, and so, you know, it was interesting to see kind of that, that heavy retreat. We didn't necessarily see that quite as hard with the last dance, granted, not exactly an apples to apples comparison, but, um, you know, I was interested to just see how quickly those prices did pull back. And it just kind of shows you to just to, to be careful with, with these types of things with documentaries, you're going to get a lot of hype pricing. Um, or if there's an event, you know, lead up to an event, you'll get a lot of hype pricing. And then once the event happens or ends, you'll typically see a drop off unless, you know, it's a Super Bowl victory or whoever wins out of that group, um, out of that event, you know, that, that's, that's different than, than you could see a boost. But for something like this, you know, there's, uh, that's just kind of a cautionary tale for, for everybody to watch out for. So thank you guys very much for, for tuning in. I'm going to probably do a follow-up video again in the next few weeks just to see if, if these prices stuck and, you know, if, or if they rebounded and maybe they caught fire again. I'm really interested to see how that does pan out. And so stay tuned. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. We have more than 110 sports card investing videos at this point. We're making them daily um, and we will keep them coming. So thanks very much for tuning in. Take care, guys. We will talk to you later.